The year is 2008. The Two Girls One Cup phenomenon had already came and went, but as its image faded in the rearview mirror, the internet found itself experiencing a renaissance of online shock videos. It was like the age of Goatsy revisited, but now, with online video becoming so much more accessible, we could take things to the next level. All of a sudden you had stuff like Two Girls One Finger, Three Guys One Hammer, and probably, most infamously, One Guy One Jar. AKA One Man One Jar, AKA One Guy One Cup. A hero who shoved an entire glass jar up his ass and broke it for the world to see. But what happened when he was left, both literally and figuratively, to pick up the pieces? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story of the Jar Man, Alexi. This video, which is basically guaranteed to be demonetized, is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a game that you've probably heard about on YouTube a million times by now, and I'm finding that it's very much a game about building different parties for different scenarios. Sometimes you'll have some heroes that are better for campaign, some that are better for faction wars, some that are better for the arena, and actually they just added a new tag team arena, which makes it so you actually have to create three different parties to go up against other players' three different parties. And it's brand new, so they'll be adding all kinds of special rewards for that. Find me under the name Wang and join my clan. I'm gonna kick out some inactive people to make room for you guys, but the spaces are limited, so join fast. The game is available for both mobile and PC. Just go to the link in my video description, and if you're a new player, you'll get 200,000 silver and a free champion, Tree Feller. And when you do that, all your treasure will be waiting for you up here in the inbox. It's hard for me to press it backwards, but so there we go. I already took all my stuff. And once again, thank you to Raid for sponsoring such a video. Oh dear. When I was working on this video, I saw a lot of things that made me actually physically squirm, which, you know, this was with the knowledge that I was working on a One Guy One Jar video. Even with that in mind, I didn't expect to see a lot of that stuff, and obviously I can't show you any of it, but I'll do my best to describe it as the video goes on. But I'm sure that most of you are already familiar with One Guy One Jar. I mean, it's one of the most requested things for me to make a video about. The story of One Guy One Jar begins on December 3rd of 2008 on eFucked.com. I'm sure a great many of you are already familiar with eFucked, but if you're not, allow me to give you uh, the cliff notes of the site. eFucked has long been a fixture of the internet, and it remains open to this day. Think of it as kind of the circus of internet porn. You'll find things like porn bloopers, wacky gimmick porn, and sometimes really, really extreme porn. Some examples I saw on the front page while working on this video were Awkward Poor Moments 9, Super Simp Ruins an Orgy, and a deaf girl that's described as the Helen Keller of casual sex. Pretty much everyone that's been around long enough has a story of the craziest thing they saw on eFuck at some point over the past several years. And it was on eFucked that One Guy One Cup would first reach the masses. You're one click away from witnessing one of the most unsettling things I've ever posted. I'm still trying to figure out if this was intentional or what. Any ordinary human being would have said, oh fuck, and then proceeded to scream like a gay couple whose marriage just got revoked. This stunner doesn't even make a peep. I don't get it. I'm sure most of you have seen the video by now, but if you haven't, allow me to describe it. A hairy naked man with a heavily lubed up asshole squats over a glass jar. He quickly thrusts down onto it, clenching it with his butt, and then gradually slides the entire 87 millimeter diameter of the glass jar up into his asshole. Like, he literally gets the whole fucking thing in there. And then suddenly, disaster strikes. There's a crack. The jar broke inside of his ass. Blood pours out of him, there is so much blood. And he digs the glass out, piece by piece, not making a sound, and then he just walks out of the frame and that's the end. I'd love to show you a clip, but obviously I can't, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play some of the sounds for you and you can just let your imagination fill in the blanks.
This video quickly spreads all over the internet. The eFuck page is getting millions of views. You got sites like One Man One Jar and One Guy in One Cup re-hosting it. It gets posted to Dig. It gets posted to Reddit. And people are posting reaction videos all over YouTube. Big ass glass shot came on his anus. Essentially, we were reliving the glory days of Two Girls, One Cup, but much more extreme. And we were left asking a lot of questions, too. Primarily, who was this man and what happened to him? It seems like, according to most people, he died. There's absolutely no source for that claim, and yet I've heard it so many times. Even when I mentioned to friends and I mentioned on stream that I was working on this video, a lot of people said, hey, didn't that guy die? So, if you go to the IMDB page for One Man Jar, and yes, it does have an IMDB page, and it has a 7.3 out of 10 stars rating. It identifies the man as Alexei Tatarov, not to be confused with MMA legend Oleg Taktarov, who came up a few times when I was searching for Alexei. These searches eventually led me to find an Imager album that supposedly belonged to him. Alex 1303 1969 with the caption, I'm not gay, just eat funny. This album contains images of him shoving various objects up his stretched anus and inflicting all kinds of penile torture upon himself, such as very tightly constricting it with some kind of tape that almost made it look like the mushroom platform from the first Mario Brothers game. And there are pictures of him inserting certain objects into it. Sounding is what they call it. Oh, there actually was a picture of him wearing clothes in a suit sitting cool like AC Slater. Although this very much seemed to be our guy, I mean, how many guys are there going around the internet just shoving big ass jars up their asses? I had a hard time finding any real proof that this was him other than other people's word of mouth. And pretty much every article or post I came across that claimed that this guy was him had people doubting it. So I did what I had to do. I spent hours digging through archives of this Imager album. And I spent those hours analyzing a Russian man's naked body and his apartment and his furniture. As far as I could tell, the penis seems to match. With the uncircumcised foreskin drooping down, looking like Ren's mouth from Ren and Stimpy. But I'm not confident enough in my dick spotting prowess to know for sure that this is the same guy. Nor was I confident enough in my ability to discern the feet or the belly rolls. Really, the key was analyzing the man's surroundings. And there's a lot of different rooms we see this man in in this album, as well as just wandering the streets of Russia naked. A lot of the rooms in these photos, such as the one with the red carpet, were different enough from the video that they could just be ruled out immediately. And then there was another floor that I saw that was kinda close, I thought it was it at first, but no, it is a little bit different, it's another room. And then finally, after I'm starting to think that I put myself through this ordeal for nothing, I find it. It's not a full image. Just a thumbnail for another album that was unfortunately not archived. This means that we can't look at it in its glorious full resolution, but I think the thumbnail has enough clues. Look at the low green baseboard where the wall meets the floor, the cables on the ground, and the edge of what appears to be the same cabinet. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. This means... He didn't die, and the man who claims to be the Jar Man is in fact the Jar Man. And in January of 2009, a month after his video started to spread all over the internet, he started to do a little bit of a PR tour. He made contact with the owner of OneGuyInOneCup.com and sent some pictures that confirmed his identity. Of course, these pictures weren't archived, but they're claimed to contain the pertinent flooring, the plastic bags, and the outlet. Not gonna lie, I'm kinda curious what's in those plastic bags, considering they've been sitting there this whole time. He would also go on to make his presence known to a bunch of different online communities and grant some interviews, the most in-depth of which was given to bestgore.com. In the interview, and in the comments section that followed it, Alex answered basically all of the questions that anybody might have for him. At the time of the interview in 2009, he was a 40-year-old Russian man who worked as a manager in the Ukraine. Although he didn't anticipate the video getting this kind of attention and he had no designs on being famous, he was ecstatic that it got as popular as it did. 
One of the big mysteries of the video is how he remained quiet through the whole thing. You know, a glass jar just exploded in his ass and he's bleeding all over. Like, you've never seen a guy bleed like this before. You'd expect at least a little... Eh, but but nothing. A big rumor was that he broke the glass on purpose and he didn't make a sound because it was feeling kind of good to him. But he assured Best Gore that this was a complete accident and it did not feel good. Usually what he would do is fill the jars up with water to keep them from breaking like this, but this time he didn't bother and he paid the price. There was also a rumor that he was so quiet because his family was in the other room and he didn't want them to hear. In the comments section of the article, he explained that his wife and two sons weren't home. He simply didn't make a sound because he didn't feel like it. In fact, he even went to work an hour later. That is the most Russian shit that I've ever heard in my life. But in any case, he's got a ton of blood pouring out of his glass-filled asshole. Now what? He said he felt like he was gonna pass out for a bit, but he didn't. And he attributed his resilience to his history of donating blood. What a stand-up guy. This means that if you've ever had a blood transfusion somewhere around the Ukraine, there's a chance that you're walking around carrying a little bit of the jar man with you. And he also took care of the situation entirely by himself. He didn't go to a doctor because he didn't want to explain what happened to a doctor. He just took out as much of the glass as he could, stuffed himself up with some cotton and went on life as usual and in about two weeks or so he was all healed up. And now with all that being said, the burning question is why? What would compel a man to take a glass jar and just stuff it up his ass? Alex explains, I decided to stretch my anus to the max many years ago. I wanted to be able to fist my own ass, which I eventually managed. The ability to stick your own fist up your rectum definitely offers a variety of sensations that you can't experience otherwise. I must admit that the beginning were rather tough. Until your anal opening is stretched well enough, trying to force large objects through there induces vomiting. As you continue doing it, you eventually get used to it and don't throw up anymore. Then it's pure pleasure. And it doesn't happen all at once. He explained that he started off with glass coke bottles and worked his way up to that 87mm monster in the video. That jar was his crowning achievement. The interview ends with a brief discussion about how Alex, when he was younger, thought about having a career in porn, but living in the former Soviet Union it wasn't a real possibility. Although now he was branching off into a few other sites. In particular, OwMyAss.com, which documented Alex cleaning up his bloody asshole the day after, and SexRazor.com, which documents Alex shoving his Bic Razor up his pee hole. Neither of these sites would reach the same acclaim as One Guy One Jar, but it was never about the fame for Alex. It was about the art. And that being said, he also shared two videos with Best Gore that, at that time, had not been seen by anybody else on the internet. One labeled Finger O2, and another labeled Tool O2. Although I don't know what Finger O2 is, I have an idea about what Tool O2 might be. Let's go back to IMDB. You know how Alex was credited on the IMDB page for One Guy One Jar? Well, you click on his name and he has another credit. One guy, one screwdriver. Another video that you're very likely to be familiar with. And if you're not familiar with it at this point, you probably have an idea from the name what it entails. With multiple famous videos like that under his belt, I think it's safe to say that Alex is the undisputed king of internet shock videos. And in fact, he actually has so many more. You see, if you were to look him up on Xtube, you would be greeted by an avatar of Alex recreating the famous Goatsy pose. And on his page, there's a veritable smorgasbord of different objects of different sizes getting shoved up different orifices. And it's funny how things come full circle. One of Alex's new fans would come to him with a warning. Please be careful with glass in your ass. You've never seen a video of a jar breaking in a guy's ass? Watch at your own risk. It's my video, pal. Anyway, that's the story of One Guy, One Cup. If you like this video, you'll probably also like my video about the Goatsy Man. I'm out of here.